If you've been around at all and seen any of my videos before, you would have known what I told you about. And a lot of that is that right now, we're dealing with something worldwide for just going on two and a half years now. And I told you it was keeping our focus. There's a lot of concern, a lot of people passing away. There's a lot of uncertainty. Even the way that society spend money changed. And I told you that kept our focus. As long as that keeps your focus, it's going to keep you distracted so you're not seeing all the other stuff going on. For many of you, this is your first time here. My name is Peter Leeds. Along with my professional and intelligent team, we help you find really high quality companies that are trading at low prices when they're just getting started. That's how you turn a few hundred dollars into a few thousand. That's nothing we say here should be considered as personalized trading advice for you. Always do your own due diligence. You need to make your own investment choices. And with this thing that the world's been dealing with the last two and a half years starts going away and the fear and the focus is not so much on it. It's like we're gonna look under the hood of the economy look under the hood of the car of the economy and see how things are really going and that's when the curtain will get pulled back that's when everything is going to come down as i told you together we're already seeing bonds which had a 40-year bull market having the first disruption in that bull market in a long time and we saw the worst beginning to the bond market in years this very year and then we also saw things like the stock market finally starting to show a little bit of reality, going to where it should be, as I told you. If you want to see, here's the stock market index chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ. This is the Russell 2000. All of that is showing you the same story. The curtain's being pulled back. We're going back to reality. And even all this fear of missing out with cryptocurrencies, that's changed. It's reversed now, where there's a lot more risk and fear. Most people getting into cryptocurrencies are starting to lose some money. So it's not fear of missing out anymore and that's going away and the other aspect is going to be what you're going to see now unfortunately is these overpriced real estate prices are going to start coming down you're starting to see this change as we go from an incredibly accommodative monetary policy with near zero interest rates for ages now and it gave us a 14-year bull market without any recessions that whole time now real estate prices will start coming down and you're starting to see the beginnings of that and we're going to start rolling right into a recession. An analogy that I want to share with you, probably the best way I can describe what we're about to go through here. If you think back, you probably remember when Sirius satellite radio and XM satellite radio were combining, and everybody thought that would be great because they would have they don't have no competitors in that space because they would join, and that there'd be cost savings and less expenses in terms of marketing and promotion. And they thought that it's going to be such a game changer that the satellite radio companies, the two of them will combine. And the thing is, each of them had hundreds of millions of dollars in debt. So you take two companies that are completely in debt beyond their eyeballs that they can't, they're not going to be able to get out of that. And you combine them. That's not a good thing. It's just a bigger pile of garbage. And so what happens is people would expect that when they combine, it's going to be such a meaningful thing that the prices will go up. So people were buying the price of, Sirius satellite radio higher and higher driving it up and I was worried about it. I wrote articles about it. I wrote serious trouble. I wrote satellite radio's swan song because you can't take two companies that are so overly leveraged and it's another kind of like the original meme stock was a satellite radio combination and when they combined finally when everyone expected the price to go higher because of that what happened? It's kind of like buy the rumor sell the news and that's sort of what's going on with the economy that you're focus is somewhere else and when it comes back and people realize that this is happening now there's going to be so much pressure coming forward going forward as we proceed because of the recession and everything coming together at once they're starting to raise interest rates for the first time seriously in a long time and what happened was Sirius satellite radio got to about seventy dollars per share and once they merged from that point on pretty rapidly in a matter of months they came down from seventy dollars a share to one dollar so so much value was wiped out of people who thought they were getting in at a great price of a stock that was going to go so much higher and it just played out that way where it was more about buying the story and selling the news that's what happened and a lot of what's being told to you in the economy people who should know better are telling you the economy is so strong and all I've been saying the entire time is this economy is incredibly weak all we're doing is living off of debt corporations municipalities individuals are living off of debt because interest rates are so low now when interest rates go higher that's going to be problematic for all sorts of investment classes 
the sides housing, in terms of all of it, it's going to be problematic going forward. I think that we're heading into what is going to be the greatest depression. And hey, you could do something for us. If you want to support the channel and get to learn more when the next videos that we make come out, subscribe to the channel, please. Share the videos with your friends. Tell people about it because we're trying to help a lot of people. And I think that you watching these videos understand how important this time in the world is right now. There's never been a more significant stock market setup or economic setup ever. So it's so important that you learn about how the economy works and how things are going to play out ahead of time. And that's what we do here on the Peter Leeds YouTube channel. So please subscribe and share the videos. And what's the other thing I tell you about is that when a market gets more volatile, that's going to either signal to you the top of a market, the bottom of a market, or it's going to show you a lot more uncertainty among investors. There could not be more uncertainty than there is right now. And the other day you saw the market goes up a thousand points and everyone's off to the races thinking we're back, baby. This market's just going to keep going higher and higher. And that lasted a day. Then the market came down over a thousand points. Does that sound like the volatility is getting a little bit more extreme? I don't think it's telling you that we are at the bottom of a market here. I think it's telling you that we're at the top of a market and that there's a lot lower to go. Even though we've seen stocks coming down pretty significantly, I think that there's still a lot more downside to come. And I just have to interject here really quickly on your video. We'll get to all the good stuff in just a second. But the other day, I said that we hadn't got any entries yet for the gold coin contest. And then I saw that there was a bunch of people said, but I sent an entry. What happened? Where did I send it? And then, so I checked with Tammy. I said, Tammy, have we not got any entries yet? She's like, yeah, we got 32. <laughs> so we had 32 so far. So we have a bunch. I'll start showing you some of the entries on this very video. So you can see the kinds of stuff that other people are entering. Every photo that we get, I'm going to show it on screen at one point so that you can see them all that way. And we'll collect them and you guys are going to choose who sent in the best photo for people to win the gold coin. And so if you want to learn all about the gold coin contest, you just go to peterleads.com slash coin. All the details are there. And if any of you are wondering where I am right now, I'm in the Smoky Mountains in Tennessee. And I'll show you, this is me and Jane playing Scrabble in our parking lot our driveway the other day and see who came over and attacked us and speaking about everything i talked about about everything coming down together let me read you this article from market insider that i was looking at the other day there's nowhere to hide in the markets right now with stocks bonds and crypto all getting crushed that is going into what i'm saying is that it's all going to come down together a lot of this market is completely over our skis we're completely delusional People just don't realize it because they've only been around for 14 years. They've never known how stock markets operate and function and work. We are going to always do what we always do. We revert to the mean. We're going back to reality. And that will be a painful process for a lot of people. To continue with this article, to go on a little bit further, he says, Investors in cryptocurrencies have also been unable to escape the carnage. With Bitcoin down about 30% year to date and off more than 50% from a record high reached in November. And if you think back to that record high in November, there's people telling you that it was time to buy and it's going to go much higher with over emphasis on the much. It's going to go much higher. It's not going much higher. It's come much lower. It's come down a lot. And a lot of the FOMO is now gone from that. A lot of what was driving prices higher was FOMO. And I'm not saying that it's not a great technology. I'm saying that the altcoins are going to get washed out when everything reverses and goes back to reality. And you saw the other day, and I've even got a screen grab or two of showing you how the altcoins are doing, and it's not very good. A lot of them are down over 50% on the day. A lot of them are down over 50% on the week. So there's all sorts of bloodbath and cryptocurrencies, especially the altcoins. And I don't think that many of these altcoins are going to still be around a decade from now, five years from now. A lot of them are going to disappear. Just to continue with the article, last part here. What many considered, he's still talking about cryptocurrencies, what many considered to be a hedge against inflation, given Bitcoin's limited supply of 21 million coins, is proving to be a risk asset heavily correlated to technology stocks. That's why you're seeing, as the Nasdaq falls, you're seeing the same kind of decline in a lot of these cryptocurrencies. And the last part from this article here, the only asset classes that have turned out to be winners in 2022 are commodities and cash. You definitely want to be in cash to a certain degree to take advantage of all these opportunities that you're going to see coming up relatively soon when this market starts going back to where it needs to go. And to put it in perspective, what I told you about cryptocurrencies is that the problems were saturation and fragmentation. Saturation means that all the money that's going to go in there is mostly in there. 
you have to get more interest to get more money to go into the space. But I think that anybody who wants to buy cryptocurrencies, they're already in there with most of their money. They're not just finding out about it now and deciding, hey, I should invest in this. They know about it for years now. So there's not a lot of new money going in. We're totally saturated. But the big problem is the fragmentation. Anytime you can have something where there might be a limited supply of Bitcoin, but it's not a limited supply of how many cryptocurrencies there are. And so right now, how many cryptocurrencies do you think that there are? I'll give you a minute to think about your guess. But your guess is wrong. <laughs> well, it might not be wrong, but the cryptocurrency total now is 19,313 cryptocurrencies. That's 19,313 different targets to absorb all the money that will go into cryptocurrencies. You have to decide, I have this dollar. Is it going to go into Litecoin or Beercoin or Dogcoin or Catcoin? It could go into anything. So as long as there's so many cryptocurrencies, when the idea or the concept of cryptocurrencies is in a lot of momentum and strength as we've seen over the last few years, then it'll do fine. But when it reverses and it goes the other way, it might get pretty ugly pretty quickly. And speaking about bonds and how they've been doing pretty badly, check out this. U.S. Treasuries have had their worst start of the year in history. And the sell-off in parts of the curve continued last week after the U.S. Federal Reserve hiked its benchmark over an interest rate by 50 basis points and announced it would begin to trim its balance sheet next month to counter unabated inflation. So if you think bonds are a safe haven, they haven't been a very safe haven in any regard. And there's a lot more downside to come for them. We haven't seen anything yet. And this is the Federal Reserve's Waller. He says he promises to tackle inflation and he says mistakes of the 70s won't be repeated. And that's sort of what I think my concern is, is that he's looking at the last war. He's saying, we are going to, we're not going to fall for what caused the problem before. But they're looking at it the wrong way. It's a completely different issue. It's a completely different situation, different problem. And further to that point, what he says is, the labor market is strong. The economy is doing so well. And that, again, is my issue because they're telling you it's doing well, but it only feels like the economy is doing well because we're all living on debt. Everyone's living on debt, and that's why we have what we need. The economy is not doing well. And this is an individual. This is Waller from the Federal Reserve, and he's telling you stuff. And you're hearing from Jerome Powell. You're hearing from the president. You're hearing that the economy is so strong. So I don't blame you for getting blindsided by this, but everyone's going to get blindsided by it because they're telling you the wrong information because they're looking at it wrong. He goes on to say, this is the time to hit it if you think there's going to be any kind of negative reaction. He's talking about raising interest rates. He says, because the economy can take it. No, it can't. And you'll see exactly what I mean by that as we go forward, as they raise interest rates. In case in point, why I say the economy can't handle it. When they raise interest rates, even by a half a percentage, that's hundreds of millions of dollars more to service the governmental debt let alone the debt you have on your credit card, let alone the debt the company you work at has, the city you live in, their debt, it all costs more. What do you think is going to happen here? They're saying we can do this and fight inflation but not kill the economy. They can do one or the other, maybe neither, but is this going to be a lot of trouble for anyone who doesn't pay attention to it the right way, who doesn't prepare for it the right way? And a lot of watching these videos is going to try and help you do that or at least be aware of it so you know what moves to make. So speaking about debt, listen to this. The household debt has neared $16 trillion. And it says, despite rising rates and inflation. And I just don't like how they look at things because it's like, what does it have to do with rising rates and inflation? Household debt is a problem, regardless. And then they say, it's, and they say that debt's increasing even despite inflation and rising rates. That's kind of like saying household debt's a problem despite elephants and waterfalls like it's ridiculous they're completely unrelated they're looking at things the wrong way he goes on to say consumer debt and credit rose 1.7 percent in the first quarter to 15.84 trillion a new record the student loan debt climbed to 14 billion dollars in the first quarter bringing the annual increase to 6.5 percent in one year but like I always tell you, this stuff is all connected. What is it all telling you? What is the story it's telling you? And what does it mean? What's the one thing it's telling you? We are going to be facing a lot of financial hardships 
with real estate, people aren't going to be able to afford the houses that they want to buy. They're not going to be able to afford the house that they currently have. They're going to be able to sell pretty easily. But if you're going to go rent a place, even rental prices are going higher. We're having all sorts of supply chain issues which are driving up inflation. And as the Fed fights inflation, it's going to put a lot of pressure on the economy. That's what raising interest rates is. They're saying we're going to punish the economy so that it slows down, it cools off a bit. That'll take care of inflation. So think about that. Inflation is going to go away because they punish the economy and make it harder for companies to operate. That's the situation we're in. That's why I always say the Federal Reserve has lost control. How do they get out of this? They painted themselves into a corner and now they don't know what to do. And I'm watching it the whole way. So you're definitely going to have a recession. I called that ages ago, but also the fear of missing out is gone from any of the cryptocurrencies. All coins are going to have a big washout among a lot of them. People are losing money on these coins. Housing is going to continue to come down. The inventory will fix itself. I always say it's not going to have more inventory because they build more homes. It's going to have more inventory because more people are choosing to sell during a difficult time. Especially when they know that house prices are on their way down. They're not going to be, they'll be more motivated to sell and that could act like a tsunami on the market. And this is all even without increased interest rates. If they increase the interest rates, that'll just make all of these things I'm talking about that much worse. The debts and debt loads will only continue to increase and it will put more pressure on stocks. They're starting to go more towards realistic valuation for stocks that are out there. And you can see this is when, if I show you these charts again, I'll show you where we maxed out. And I talked about this months ago, that this is the max out point where then it just started coming down. You pulled the curtain back. This is the point where we went from maximum delusion to going back to reality. And the thing is that when things correct, they always overcorrect. So it's not going to go to proper valuation. It'll go beyond that to even lower values. And then eventually we'll heal and recover and start to build back from that point. But I'm saying it's going to take many, many years. It's not anything that's going to happen anytime soon. The downside is going to happen soon. The getting out of the downside won't happen for a long, long time. And bonds have a lot lower to go and we're going to be facing a default deluge. We were going to face a default deluge even if the interest rates did not increase. But the fact that they are, it's only going to make it that much worse. So listen, all you got to do, we want to make these videos for you to help you understand how things are going. We see the economy differently. I see things differently than other people do. And it works out pretty well. So if you want to stay connected with us, join us on Twitter, which is the only social media I actively participate in now. And join us on this YouTube channel. Please subscribe to the channel to encourage my team and get to know what we're talking about so that you can land on your feet. There's ways you can get out of this. We're going to talk about all of them every video. For many of you, this is your first time here. My name is Peter Leeds. And along with my entire professional and wonderful team, we help you find really good, high quality, low priced stocks. And understand that you should always do your own due diligence and nothing we say here should be considered as personalized trading advice for you. If you want to learn more, just come over to PeterLeads.com and think about joining the world famous PeterLeads.com newsletter, which has customers of six different continents. Three, two, one. For many of you, this is your first time here. Just take my book. <laughs> <laughs> we might actually use that. <laughs> it's still rolling.